Crew Media Podcast, Neon Genesis Evangelion versus The Wall, still talking about Evangelion, episode 9, go. Yeah, so first things first, Nimitz class carrier. Uh, go back and watch the last part of the <laughs> So we go into episode 9, which is probably one of the best episodes in the yes. entire series. Um, this is where my memory starts coming in. Yes, <laughs> in which Asuka moves in with Shinji and Masato, uh, so you get a bit of a, I don't know, slice of life comedy kind of deal As going they on. deal with each other and also Asuka goes to school with Shinji now. Yeah. Yep, she goes to school with all of them. And basically this next angel that shows up is is Israel. Yeah, and Israel can split and do two copies of itself. And basically the only way that they can beat it is if they are perfectly in sync and are able to get a killing blow at the same time. Now the problem is Ray and Unit Zero are still out of commission, which means that Shinji and Asuka have to work together. And Asuka's really hard to get along with. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's got um, a large personality. Um, <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> they don't like each other, so basically they're forced to, with her living there, they get on this training regimen where they basically practice Introvert dance. versus extrovert. Yes. Pretty much. They and, play Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, they, they play Dance Dance Revolution because they perfectly choreograph their fight. So they're completely in sync. And that's like the whole point of the episode. It's pretty good. It's actually a lot more lighthearted than you'd realize. Yes, surprisingly. I went back and actually watched and this they... episode uh, before coming here tonight. And I was surprised like how lighthearted. Considering like, hey, we have six days before the world freaking ends. So uh, yeah. learn um, how to play dance, dance, dance. Shinji and Asuka's workout uniforms match each other. And I think it's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's because it's cute or just because that's all the Masato had? <laughs> You know, I didn't know that one. There was a two for one sale at the local, at the local like, mayor's market. Because I was like, these 14 year olds are going to love this. <laughs> um, so here's the thing even if you aren't going to watch the entire series, which you should, it's good. Yes. At least watch this episode. Yeah. There's some good stuff in this episode for sure. Um, so next up is uh, again, Ray's still out of commission for this one, but all the kids are supposed to be taking a class trip to Okinawa. Um, like in every slice of life anime ever. Let's go see all the rusty tanks! But basically, because they're still on standby for angel attacks, Tokyo 3 is closed, so, you know, Asuka and Shinji cannot go. They're mad. They're, they, do be, they do be mad about that. I feel that. And then it turns out that there's an angel that's just dormant in the, the Earth's crust. Just been there. Like in magma. In, in magma. Its name is Sendelfin. <laughs> And Virgo, basically, Virgo's not paying attention to the names. That's your. That's the eighth angel. And basically, this angel's odd because it's not like fully developed. Like it's still an embryo. It's like a fetus. So they decide that they're gonna like equip Unit Two with like some super thermal gear and send it into the magma to go punch this fetal angel in the face and hopefully kill it. I punch babies. For uh, but also, you know, learn more <laughs> about angel development and such because I guess that's important. Um. Basically, but of course the angel wakes up, rapidly develops, and Asuka has to fight an angel in a volcano in magma. Um, High stakes. Yeah, and unfortunately she does, well she does beat it, but she also almost dies because the, oh, yeah. <laughs> the thermal I mean, gear starts failing. Yeah, funny and, thing, yeah. Um, Shinji actually jumps in to rescue her at the last moment. Yay. Yep. He actually grew a pair for once. Woo! Go Shinji! So, in the next episode... Episode 11. Uh, Tokyo 3's power grid fails, so Nerf goes into, like, lockdown standby mode, and all the pilots are stuck outside. And, of course, another angel shows up, this time, uh, Materio. And... Angel 9! <laughs> yeah. So this angel has an acid attack. Um... Whoa. It. Oh yes, yeah, the spider. I was watching a lot of aliens. Yeah, basically it's just a big spider with a big crying eye. It leaks acid. Me too. Um, but yeah, basically they're trying to like go through the low power to like turn get the avas running. The pilots have to sneak back in, and then all three of them have to actually like work together to beat the angel, and they do. And it's the first time that all three are operating at the same time. If I believe. 
I'm correct. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, and Shinji ends up being able to use his rifle to kill, uh, but to whatever the name is. Yeah, but the <laughs> yang Mater- material. Dead. Castiel's brother. Yeah. Uh, something interesting happens this episode, too. Uh, so they have no power, so trying to get the pilots into the entry plugs, they have to like manually crank the plugs yeah. in. And uh, Gendo, uh, Shinji's father, is actually helping crank the sh- plugs in, which is one of the first times that Shinji's ever seen his father like willingly help somebody out. Yeah. More no. on that later. Yeah, <laughs> kind of saying, there, there's ulterior motive, for sure. Um... Oh, another very important detail. The That's details that I pay attention to. It's around this time that no more real wor- world beer uh, for Misato. Uh, copyright happened. And they're oh. like, oh, you can't do that. And Ana's like, fine, we'll make one up. And I think they changed it from Yabizo, which I'm still probably mispronouncing that, to uh, Boa. Hmm. Rip. Rip. R. I. P. Masato. I guess. I guess that that, that that rationing was getting hard on Masato. Yeah. She's, she had, she had no, to switch she had to, to great value. She had to switch to Nair of Mark brand. <laughs> um. So yeah, the next episode, Gendo and uh, Foyatsuki, who we have not talked about, it's basically second command of Nerve. Yeah. He he was one of Gendo's professors back when he was in college. He's an old guy. He's kind of an odd character. He gets more work in the rebuilds like everybody else. <laughs> uh, but they go to Antarctica, and while they're in Antarctica, and, you know, Masato's in charge, apparently, uh, another angel shows up. This time it's a Hawk Wheel. And this one's way up in Earth orbit. Yeah. And basically just starts dropping parts of itself on the Earth that are like giant bombs. <laughs> and it's just going in a straight line for Tokyo 3, and they're like, crap, it's in the stratosphere. How do we even do that? Um, now basically the way that they have to defeat this one is all three angels or all three Avas have to basically like join together and project their AT fields at the same time to catch it as it falls from space. Basically it'll kamikaze Tokyo 3. Yeah. So basically they have to be in sync and they work together and they catch the angel and push it somewhere else. And that's, that's the, end of, that's the end of the Let's go. Then my idea might be just dumb enough to get us all killed. Yep. And also, I believe this is the only time in the entire si- series that Gendo actually says, good job, son. Yes. Yeah, um, and this proves to be motivating to Shinji, actually. Now, something else to point out is Gendo doesn't actually directly say that to Shinji. It's over the phone. Yeah. Uh, Gendo and, um, Gendo's been off on a lovely jaunt to Antarctica while all of this crap is happening. Yeah, what, what are they doing in Antarctica? Oh, uh, well, they're coming back with a long item shrouded in uh, a tarp. Oh, we're going to talk about that later. So, <laughs> episode 13 is... Uh, oh, well, synchronization test. Yay, more synchronization Directed tests. by Ritsuko. Yay. Oh, and then the next angel, Iryu, appears. The 11th angel. Oh, right. This is the one that's like, what, they th- it's corrosion. They, so they think it's some yeah. kind of, like, rust. Yeah. Where, like, it's, like, eating its way through Tokyo 3. Yeah, and honestly, the pilots don't do much in this episode. They're kind of stuck because of the corrosion. They're kind of stuck in their Avas. And this isn't, like, a an angel you fight with an Ava. Yeah, because it ends up infecting the base's, like, systems and starts, like, eating its way through the, the Magi, which are these three supercomputers that run the base. The Magi were made by Ritsu, Ritsuko. Ritsuko's mother. And basically she said that each of the personalities that were programmed to these supercomputers were based off a different aspect of herself. So one of them was her as a scientist, her as a mother, and as a woman. And as a woman. I yeah. don't know how this translates to being a computer, but let's and just go with it. Yeah. The but basically, so... Uh, Ritsuko has to actually go physically into one of the um, Magi computers, which apparently her mom's brain is in, we find out. Yeah. Um, Cute stuff right there. Which, yeah, just more biological technology. Yeah, they, they're pulling some GLaDOS shit up here. Yeah. And so she she has a nice talk with her mom and manages to, like, lull the angel into, like, a benign state, and that that's how that kind of works. But, yeah, the pilots, this is one of the few episodes where they don't really do anything. Yeah. Yeah, they're just kind of there. Yeah, and then we get to episode fourteen, which, if you're watching it, is a recap episode of what just happened. Woo! But for us here at Heterochromedia, I think we're going to use this to explain 
What the hell is the Human Instrumentality Project? Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> lay it on us. Um. So. I don't know if, I'll under, if I understand it correctly or not. Yeah, that's the problem. I feel like we know <laughs> what we're talking about, but it, we might not. Let's just say that nobody fully knows what's going on by this point. Actually, so, most of the people that most of the people that like dedicate their lives to the show don't know what's really going on. Basically, the Illuminati group I was talking about earlier, Sile, they have the sacred text that um, basically tells them that after all the angels are defeated, they're going to be able to implement what's called human instrumentality, which is basically where humanity dissolves back into like one life form primordial soup kind of thing. And everybody, there's no boundaries. Like everybody, like is fully in tune with everybody else. There's no conflict. World peace, basically. I guess. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like the goal of 1969. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's basically like yeah, you kind of like lose yourself, but you you're still no there more, in like the collective. No more pain and suffering. I, I think Ray has a line in End of Evangelion, which is basically like you don't know where you end and where somebody else begins. And yeah, so it just frankly sounds awful, and <laughs> no no individuality, no individuality, and you so get turned into orange tang, like yeah, soup, <laughs> which we'll get into. Um, More on that later. Oh my god, number twenty. But but yeah, so that's basically human instrumentality, and Gendo kind of has like his own plot thing going on where he wants to like hijack human instrumentality to see his dead wife. Um, he may not be thinking things through. Yeah, admittedly, because we were talking about this too, is like, it seems like just the normal instrumentality kind of accomplishes his goal, but he has to do his own thing, kind of. It's all a little vague. And I'm sure somebody's going to come in and comment on this video in the next 10 years and tell us that You're wrong. we're wrong. And we probably are. And we appreciate that. And we do appreciate that, because please just but explain But be nice it. about it, I'll cry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this much, that... The main plot may not be why Evangelion is so beloved. I think it's the characters. It's the characters, yeah. yeah. The plot's there. It's there. The characters are all very messed up and also very relatable. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of messed up things, it's time for episode 15, which I also say is the end of the honeymoon phase of Evangelion. Oh, right. So, Kaji... Um, who has not left since delivering Oscar. No, he's been hanging out. He's, he, he actually, in the geo front, has some watermelons. He has a little farm that he tends to. Oh, yeah, he's yeah he's pretty laid back. He's a melon man. Yeah, but he he's kind of like delving into Nerve's secrets and is kind of trying to figure out what's going on. And... Wait, him, Masato, and Ritsuko attend a wedding? What yeah, is that, is that one where they're all drinking at the bar? And then... Oh, is this yeah. the one where Misato... Misato, like, confides in Kaji, I think, at the end of this. Or is that later on? No, Kaji confides in her, I think. With, like, his clandestine activities. Maybe. Um, Something. I think they both... I think they both expressed their feelings. They were drunk. Yeah, they were drunk. It happened. Misato was thrown up in an alleyway. Yeah. That's more the B-plot. Yeah. Shinji and Gendo go to, go to um, Shinji's mom's grave. And, not together, they just run into each other. Yeah, they just happen to, to run into each other. And, oh yeah, so Asuka kisses Shinji that night. That's a thing that happens. <laughs> um, it's a thing that happens. Uh, Masato and Kaji hook back up. And she finds out he's a double agent for the Japanese government. And he kind of tells her, hey, so Nero's like got some weird shit going on that you don't know about. And you might want to look into it. And then they go down to Nerv's like sub basement where they, where they keep Adam. Oh boy, Adam! Hey, he's, he's back. Adam. I wasn't I wasn't going crazy a couple episodes, a couple parts back. He's... I told you there was an Adam involved in all this. So <laughs> yes. Adam is basically the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man wearing an upside down Bill Cipher as a face who's been crucified. A few eyes. He's got like seven eyes. He for the seven it. seals. There's a lot of biblical si I imagery. Oh, and at least this is what Kaji thinks. He thinks he's looking at Adam. Uh, we'll find out later that uh, Adam's not who's pinned against the cross. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to that later. As, as we <laughs> said. Um, okay. Okay. We're, we're almost getting to episode 16. 
Yeah. Uh, everything, we're about to enter the third phase I was talking about. So, uh, Monster of the Week is about to fade away, and every the floor is about to fall out from under all of our characters. Mm -hmm. So, any, any progress all of our characters have made emotionally is all about to completely collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, the, the next angel is uh, Lilial, and basically just a big black and white checkered ball in the sky. And they go to attack it, and Shinji and Unit 1 get absorbed into it. And basically, Ritsuko, through some science bullshit, uh, determines <laughs> that this angel actually exists on a higher dimension of existence. And basically... Um, the, the the shadow that's on the ground that Shinji fell into is the actual angel and the sphere is just like a representation of its higher dimensional self. I, 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 I didn't agree to any interstellar stuff. That's several episodes down the line. <laughs> um, but basically, because they think Unit 1 is just gone now, Nerve is like, oh, well, we can't kill this thing, so I guess we're just going to drop every bomb we have left on it. <laughs> Why not? Because maybe that'll be enough to, to do it. But while uh, Shinji is trapped in limbo, uh, he goes on the, the first big introspective mental journey. Jessica, can you tell us about Shinji's journey in, in the shadow of the angel? Oh God, which one is this? <laughs> this is the first one where the life support's starting to run out. Oh man, I don't know if I remember this. Remember what you were saying at the... the we, we show up at the train station a lot. Uh, he's on well, the train. Yeah, the yeah. angel apparently gets inside Shinji's brain. He's like, boy, this dude hangs out at the train station a lot. I'm going to use that as a setting that'll make him comfortable to start speaking Is his feelings to me. Is this the one where me. he talks to his younger self? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, he talks to his younger self. <laughs> um, <laughs> do I remember the, the, the details? No. <laughs> uh, his mom's there, too. His mom... Yeah. There's a lot of things going on. Um, so, yeah. And basically, with the help... <laughs> I swear I like the show. With the help, we, we, love, we really like the show, folks. With, with the help of his, his dead mom, who... <laughs> do, do we want to talk about the... I think, is this, this is where the reveal happens, right? Uh, they don't right. expressly state it, but things start coming out. Basically, Shinji's mom was the original test pilot for Unit 1, and basically dissolved into the LCL, which is the liquid that fills, like, the cockpit of the, the unit. And basically, similar to what we were talking about with human instrumentality, where you give up your individuality and kind of join the, the hive mind, as it were, that's what his mom did. So she, like, lives rent-free in Unit 1's head now. And so she was able to talk to Shinji um, through the goo. And, and we get this awesome visual of Ava Unit 1 breaking out of the angel yep. of the sphere. It's completely covered in blood. Brutal. It's yeah, killing the angel in the process. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and I love that this recap just says um, he makes it out alive and well, but his experiences have left him deeply unsettled. <laughs> like nothing up to this point has made him unsettled. <laughs> that that's the other thing with the series. There is a lot of unsettling imagery throughout the entire thing. Oh, that part. End of Evangelion is like that cranked up Ugh. to thirty. More on that at three in the morning. Yeah. Um, moving on. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, disaster strikes. <laughs> Trying to talk about Evangelion just it it, it you, makes us sound just like insane. <laughs> this is what's casual happening. conversation in Ohio. So the audio's changed all of a sudden. What's happening? Well, it's actually me, Spencer, talking in the future, or well, technically the present. Several weeks after recording this, and I've made the executive decision to splice up the recap right here. So we're gonna take a breather, ending here with episode 16. The next part of the Evangelion recap will come out next Friday, or maybe it's already out by the time you're listening to this. And hopefully, hey, you don't have to wait. But for my mental sanity, as my migraine starts building up from editing, I'm going to take a breather here. So, in that meantime, be sure to subscribe to Heterochromedia here on YouTube. And if you wish to download the audio form of the podcast, you know how podcasts are meant to be, be sure to check out our Buzzsprout page. A link to that will be in the description below. And also in the next week while you're waiting, uh, be sure to check all three of our respective channels to see what the different things that we get up to on the internet. 
Hey, thank you for listening in. We will see you at the next part of the Evangelion recap. And, well, at some point, we're going to be comparing Neon Genesis Evangelion to Pink Floyd's The Wall. So stick around. <laughs>